hanging around these friends. From there, it just went pear shaped you know? And then I was just homeless. My stomach is ripping out. My dad's come there. I'm screaming, ah, ah. Whatever you think you are, there's something else. Hi guys, welcome back to Marvin Herbert's Nothing But The Truth podcast, hosted by myself, Christian Morgan. Today, as always, we've got another fantastic guest. We're joined by a music superstar, fitness fanatic, and Marvin's close friend, Temper T. Temps! <laughs> Temps, thanks for joining us today. Different <laughs> yeah, different. What's going on? What's going on? Yeah. So, um, for people who don't know you, Ted, do you want to give a little introduction to who you are? Obviously, um, you know, I, I, I do music. My name's Tempati. I'm a music artist called Tempati. Um, you know, I'm, I'm into my fitness. You can see on my Instagram if you want to take a look. You know, like nice and concentrated in the field that I want to um, start getting into. But yeah, I do music. So if you want to check me out on Spotify, you just type in Tempity and, you know, and have take a little look for yourself. Cool. Excellent. And so whereabouts are you from, Temps? Um, Forest Gate. Forest Gate. Yeah. And that's where you always brought up, was it? Yeah, I was born in Forest Gate Hospital. And always the music aspirations, been doing it since a kid? Well, yeah, been doing it since a kid, man. Yeah, proper. You know, when you're growing up, you see So Solid, Big Up, Bigger Man. You know them man's them man there, Lisa Mafia and that. You get me? That was the first kind of so it, solid crew. So solid, and even bef just before that, you're listening to like you know, um, I bring you flowers, and you get me. I don't smoke the reefer and little man. <laughs> yeah. That was our thing. We was just spitting over that. You get me in the beginning. So that's where it all kind of started. Still. Nice. Well, I'd like to say congratulations on where you've got to at the moment, and yeah. hopefully you're gonna have a lot more stuff coming in 2021. So. Talk to us about your plans. Like, what have you got coming up? Is it going to be? You spoke about the fitness stuff. Yeah. You're going to try and get into that a little bit. Yeah, I'm going to try and get into where everything is like kind of moving to online and not so you know you've got this social distancing now. And you, they want to close the gyms and you know, they just want to divide and conquer everyone. So yeah, that's it. You divide and conquer. Where like you know what the the Marv was talking about. You know, there's three people like you know you're going to be able to plug me into and and we're going to start this thing online. So yeah, this is gonna be the next steps fitness is like a second venture to me even though it's something that i do every every day see to, to hold, on, hold on it's not a second venture you've been doing this fitness thing forever and i've been but doing it forever but if it you, wasn't for the fitness yet, yeah it wouldn't have been tempered i believe if, you know it's in being me and tempered on the mic it was it's a different character in itself i like i can't just mc i can't just just force myself to do it. It's, it's a character. I have to want to do it. So me being fit, it does play a role in it, but it, it's completely different. But you wasn't always into music. For those that don't know out there, you actually worked before you got into music. You've, no, you actually, I, you've gone through certain things in life before you got into music. No, you know, that is right, but I've always been into the music, but I wasn't in the music scene. I was in the music scene by then because I was 21 years old and that's when I had my song called Battle With Him. But... Um, with um, um, produced by Skits Beats, but at the time the game wasn't like how it is now. So you had to find other ways of, you know, making sure you were stable in life. So, so prior to the music blowing, yeah. mm -hmm. what what would you get up to in your everyday life? Uh, prior what to, you prior to the music, money. What was you doing for living like? Uh, prior to um, um, the music blowing, obviously you know you have your friends. You got this, you got that, you got the bit of the greens, you got the herbs, and you do whatever you're doing in it. And then you know you say to yourself, all right, cool, man. I, and I want to do this. I, I think this is going to be a bit more of a stable route for me to go down. And, you know, I applied to be a postman, you know. At that time, I was staying at my mum, staying at my dad. <laughs> you know what? I've got to laugh, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Go I on. can't imagine temper T being a postman. <laughs> come to your yard like a post, man. Pull out the lady and go, man. Because <laughs> <laughs> I know his, I know his energy, yeah? Yeah, yeah, I yeah. I just imagine someone coming out and saying, oh, bro, oh, bro. And imagine someone coming out and having a guy at the postman. Like, I think it's... Not that he, I'm not saying he's a violent person. So I don't know him to be a violent person, but he's very animated in the way he talks. Do you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. I'd, like, until you told me that, like that shocked me that you was a postman, if I'm being honest. Do you know what I'm saying? It, it shocked me. So from the postman, you move forward in life and you had your own little experiences with the road life, the, mm. the street life. And obviously, by the way you've developed, you haven't gone down... I'm, I'm going to say one thing, though, because, you know, it's, it's not about glorifying it or anything. Like, to be in a crew that I was in back in the day, you had to be about things. And I was in a crew from East London called Sludem, Big Up Chronic, R.I.P. Esco, Big Up G-Man, Big Up Rage. Like, you get me? The Big Up Craze, Big Up Shorty Smalls. There was a lot of us doing our thing, you know what I mean? So it's like, you definitely... I, I got into the crew by fighting someone. 
You understand? You get me? That's how I got into the crew. You could never ever be emceeing the way guys were emceeing and you were on it. Did it happen from the youth now? You can't send for people and be telling people suck him on the We was on Greece. That's that's where I came from, innit? You get me? And obviously, you know, you had other crews in East London that was doing their thing, but Slew them was one of the realest crews, grime crew ever. You get me? In East London, Bay Man from North, West, South. Just oh yeah, now nah, man, big up Esco, man, like Slew them, man. Use that. We, we only listen to Slew them. You get me? You know them ones there, but me as an individual with the smartness and intelligence that I had, that's how I maneuvered. You know what I mean? I didn't take my outside. Um, um, things that were going on and take that as me when you had to be who you was you had to be that person and and that's who you are inside isn't it it's not because oh, you, now you, you you have to attain or live up to a certain kind of um, status this is what you're in this is what you're about you know what I'm saying so me getting a job and doing whatever I had to do I had to do that you understand because I just didn't want to be on the street shutting banners and scores anymore I've like you get me you, you, you tried all the other stuff and it didn't work you get me I had bridging in the ends doing mad stuff you understand they were making the pee from doing that so you then said to yourself in your life what well, I had this one, I've done this one, I ain't been shift. I done this one, I ain't been shift. So wh why am I still doing this one? Looking like some next youth man on a bike trying to be dotting around doing all that. Man, go fucking get a job, lad. You get me? You know them ones there? Roll mill, posting, this, that. And you get me? You know what I'm saying? Right, this is what I'm talking mm. about, the mindset, right? So the mindset, yeah, that I had when I was growing up, I was in self-destruct. Like, yeah. I'd say 98% of the, the street kids now have that self-destruct mindset, right? Because I didn't give a monkeys. I didn't care. I didn't care whether I was in prison. I didn't care whether I got stabbed. I didn't care whether I got shot. I didn't care whether I ruined your life or ruined your family, ruined your everything. I didn't care. I was just focused on getting that money because I was in self-destruct, yeah? So I never had the good support network around me. My parents wasn't the best influences, right? So after getting to know Temps, uh, we bonded through physical training. When we started bonding through physical training, I started realizing, wow, this guy's is spiritual. He's on a spiritual path. Do you know what I mean, and that was because of um, his mum, his dad, always sort of programming him to be the best version of him he can be. So, because I never had that guidance when I was growing up, I mean, I just went in self-destruct, where getting to know you a lot better, I've noticed now he's always been on the developing into the best person he can be. Do you understand? So the message in the words is, Develop becoming the best person that you can be so you don't end up in a similar place that I was in. Because it is obvious to see that if you become the best person you can be physically, then you will have a lot more opportunities. You won't go to prison. I mean, you might get stabbed. You, you might possibly get shot depending on the environments you live in or working or grafting or moving. But if you take yourself out and navigate yourself through the way Temps did, yeah, then boom, you're gonna get through pretty much unscathed and you're not going to get shot up like i did you're not going to go to prison like i did you're not going to have wars all around the country because i was in self-destruct i wanted to be the worst thing on the planet i wanted to be the hardest thing on the planet all to my detriment that i absolutely regret now do you understand mm -hmm. and that's why i love temps because his focus from a young man has been to be the best version of him he can be and he became that physically and then went on to get into the music so after after the um, the postman thing. Um, you obviously had your trials and tribulations because I'll, I'll say this now because you can't be who you become without being in the lowest point ever. So everybody <coughs> has to hit rock bottom before they can become the best person that then they can be. So what was your lowest point? My lowest point was um, I was working on um, a walk in in Limehouse and I used to post I used to post um, Samuda Estate. I used to see Wiley. I used to see Trim and all them man. And then there was one walk that um, one of the managers gave me. And it's like, but no one showed me the walk. It's like, what's what? you got all these four bags around you, this, that, whatever. And it's like, I, I, I done two bags. And then the rest of them, like, you get me, I came back with them. And then one of the managers at the end said, oh, but you, you need to go out and do it again. You need to finish the bags. I said, no, 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 I'm not doing that, man. Forget it, man. It's two o'clock now. I finished. You get me? He goes, oh, so you don't want to go out? I said, no, I'm not doing it, man. What am I doing? I'll go come back and do it tomorrow. So, all right, cool. Well, we're, we're suspending you in this one. <laughs> I said, yeah, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. That's the one you're doing. So after that, where I was staying, I was staying in a place in um, in Stratford called Kia Road, just like by Maryland. And that, that I was working so I could make sure I could, uh, you know, afford um, my rent. And it was a room that I was staying in at the time, you know, because 
where I, I got kicked out of my house and then I was staying at one of my friends' house called Skits Beats and then after things didn't go well there and then I, I got moved into this place and then all of a sudden I, 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 couldn't, I couldn't afford it and some, the landlord was doing something with the house and then he started coming in and banging down all the walls, there was mold on the carpet, this one, that one. Long story short, I had to end up putting my stuff in one place that where, where he had in Manor Park, but I had no gas, no electric, no nothing. So then, like, at, at times I want to go and stay at my mum's, but then we're not really getting on too well. So then I've had to go back with a little torch and stay in that place and do all of that. And then um, at the time, like, I, I was um, like I was friends with, I'm still friends now, um, some a woman called Cassette Player, Carrie Mundane. She was like, we used to work heavy back in the day. She introduced me to Nike, you know, Dazed and Confused, Billionaires Boys Club. I was doing a lot of modelling stuff. Um, we went to, um, where did we go to? We went to um, Greece. Um, to meet Castor Jack, yeah, and I performed at the French Embassy in Greece and things like that. We done all of that, and then I came back and I was staying at my mum's, and then from there it just went pear shaped, you know. And then I was just homeless, like you get me. I had nowhere to stay. Carrie let me stay with her for a little while, you know. I had to walk from, um, I had to go to Stratford, take the train, and then walk from Dawson to Stoke Newton. I was doing that for six months, you know, like it was mad, like you know them ones there. I've never been in that situation and. Growing up in Stratford and Hackney wasn't really the place to be walking from Dawson to Stoke Newton. Like, some you, you, you're calling your budget to see if we can get lifts and all that. But bare times, you, there's no lifts. <laughs> you get me? So you're just walking. So I've done that by myself, innit? You know what I mean? And then that, at that time, I'm trying to do songs, doing different things. And then I've, I've managed to write a song called Next Hype. You know, like, you get me? I, I was staying with one of my friends as well called Sluggy. Certain times, like, he, he would allow me to stay in his living room, but at least his parents' house. And certain times, we would fall out. So now I'm, I'm sleeping in the blocks in Maryland. Like, bruv, it was crazy. And then from, from, from that situation, I'm just trying to cut it down. From that situation there, went to the studio, recorded the song. Then one of my friends, I was like, look, come and pick me up from the studio. I've done one mad song, you know, you get me? And then he listened to it and he said, do you see this song here? Yeah, man, he's going to take you places. And this youth here, um, he had a brother called Dapster. He, like, he was like a year younger than me. And he used to have the um, 1210 techniques, 1210. Yeah, yeah. We used to always be in his house. So when his brother were in, his little brother, Tiny, you know, Tiny would like, um, Tiny would let me into the house. Yeah, he would be playing all the grand tunes. He would be like, Temp, spit your bars, man. Nah, man, trust me, you're going to blow, you're going to blow. And this is the person that heard this track at this time like you get me he he would even put me in travel lodges at certain times because he was doing a bit of the road thing back in the day so i'll be able to go downstairs to the travel lodge and you know eat eggs and beans and like it was really like you know like when you say like your life is like a movie that's what it is isn't it you know what i mean so when that song's come out now bruv at the end of 08 i've i've, I've performed at one place like you get me i think cassette player um got me booked there jamie was there i think skepta was there my bridging massive anton was there like you get me and i i shut it down it was warm they went on to um um westwood show you get me me shorty and jamie you get me went on to hype the song on 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 the on, on bbc radio one clinked it and then from 2009 january it's like i never yeah. ever look back and i never right, like so i will ask you one question yeah because right? this is the one question that i'm going to ask a lot of my guests yeah when did you give up Bruv, I don't, I can't remember when I, I, I never, <laughs> ever, ever gave up. Come I never, on, I might on. have slowed, I always tell Slow people down. this, and I, I might have slowed down. So, certain things in life, it's, it's not always people. It might be like a, a spiritual attack. It might be even something your parents done in their life. It might be even something you done, and you, you, you've got to get over that trial and tribulation. You get me? But I've you, never given up. Have you always had, like, because... I've always seen, mm -mm. Like, I can always see my, my end. Like, I can see my goal. Yeah. I can see my goal. Every day I wake up, I yeah. can see where I'm going to be when I'm old. I can see that. Do mm -hmm. you have the same vision? Yeah, I have the same vision. Yeah, yeah, And that's yeah, yeah. why you're alive today. And it's like, I, I'll give you one story. Um, 2010, yeah? So, the next hype's been out for a year already. I'm with Chasing Status. You're doing a song called Hype is Hype. Yeah, um, what, April, we've done... Um, March, April, we've done one tour. Four, first tour that I've ever done. Gone to Oxford, this place, that place. Mashing it down, mashing it down, mashing it down. 100,000 people, 50,000, 40,000 people. Clinks, yeah? Then I've gone to Napa in that summer. Gone to Napa, and then my belly started hurting. But I agreed the story. I was staying in Cameo's Villa at the time, and there was one guy that wanted me to go on the boat party. 
And I was like, bro, I don't want to fucking, I don't want to go on there. Why? I'm sleeping, bro. Leave me, innit? Oh, Temps, there's no artists on the island. This, that, we need you on the boat. This, I said, move, man. Get out, bro. We in the villa for? Let me, I just want to sleep. You get me? Oh, no, no, Temps, please, man. Please, I'm begging you. I'm begging you. We need, uh, you haven't got people, got all the fans on this thing. They want to see it. Bro, get out. Didn't want to get out. This is why it's so deep. So I said, all right, all right, all right, all right. I'll go. So they bought yardies from, from London to do all the, like, you know, stew chicken, curry goat and rice, this one, that one, yeah? So, me like an idiot, I've gone on the boat and then they've got all the food in the, in like, you know, the chicken and chip boxes, innit? And it's sweating mad. I'm saying to myself, but I'm not even praying it. I'm saying to myself, you know, I'm hungry, I need to eat something. So, all right, cool. I, I start eating it, eating it, eating it, eating it. Bro, whoa, the next day I started feeling a pain in my stomach. I said, what's that? So one of the guys, um, I think Finos or one of his, took me to a Mexican place, innit? And them times there, I just wanted to eat something. I w wasn't really a pork eater, but I bought a rack of ribs. You understand? And, 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 and chips, don't eat pork now. But yeah, I bought a big rack of ribs, yeah? And then I had a seven up. And I thought, oh, yeah, I'm going to have that. And, and I'm going to be blessed after that little pain that I'm feeling in my stomach. It's going to go. <laughs> it didn't go. Like, I still had another performance. Like, um, that, that later on that night. So I went um, to, but we was on the front of the strip. And then there was one woman in one shop. And she gave me one kind of tablet to dissolve in some water. Had it. I done my show at Club Ice after my stomach was still paining. I had to go back to London. So I could go and... Um, um, do a, a festival with Chasing Status and the Prodigy was going to be there. So the Prodigy was headlining it, Chasing Status after 100,000 people. So I've gone back, this, that, I'm at South Woodford, that's where I was living at the time. And I got on the train. Then my stomach was, was just acting up. And I was like, what's this? Like, you get me? I phoned, I phoned Saul at the time, that's his name, Chase Saul. I phoned, I said, bruv, you know what? I'm not even going to make it, you know, like, my stomach's fucked. Like, you, I don't know what's going on. Like, you get me? It's like, oh, look, Temps, man, we need you. This, that, rare, rare. But, you know, if your stomach's hurting, you look, don't worry about it, innit? So I was like, all right, then, cool. So if went back to my house, chilling out, chilling out. So this was like, what, the end of July. August is coming. Like, you get me? So the carnival's approaching. So I was like, oh, cool. Like, I went to the carnival. I was blessed that morning. I woke up, this, that. Started, went to my manager's house, got out from Notting Hill Gate, walked down Portobello Road on my ones, this, that, whatever. You get me, bought some food from the place, ate some food, <laughs> come back, sitting in the house. My stomach's hurting. Yeah, I, just, I, I it got to like about the evening, five o'clock in the evening, I told my friend Skits, I was like, bruv man, could like to drop me to the train station, because this is bait, blood. like, I, I, I can't even stand up no more, innit? you get me? So I've gone back to the train station, gone to my house, lying down, lying down, lying down. I woke up the next day, like, you get me? Woke up the next day, had someone with me, dropped them to the train station, whatever, rare, rare, rare. And then I went to my friend's house, Chronic, and then his, um, his cousin, Namix, was there. They start chilling, I thought, oh, yeah, I'm going to be able to build it. I'm going to be cool, you know? Like, and then Namix was like to me, oh, what's going on? Like, you know, like, you seem a bit, you know what I mean? I said, oh, I don't know, my stomach's hurting me. I don't know what's going on. So he's like, oh, I said, like, just drop me to my house, man, please, man. I need you to drop me to my house. I'm not feeling too good, innit? I couldn't even blaze the zoo. So he's dropped me back to my house in South Woodford. Yeah, I've got to my house, lying down in my bed. I've passed out for like a few hours, still pain in my stomach. So I phoned one of my brethren that I used to go and train at his gym, Ange, you know, PMG, big up the PMG man them. And then he's like, look, Temps, man, like, just go to the hospital. You don't know what it could be, innit? So I phoned the ambulance. All right, phoned the ambulance, gone to Whips Cross Hospital. And they said to me, oh, you know what, you might have gastritis or food poisoning. That's what they said that I had. And then they gave me some tablets. I was with my sister or whatever. They came to see me after. <coughs> but for three days, I was crawling around in my house. My dad would come and make ground rice and light soup. I couldn't even eat. I'm trying to eat with the fork. I can't eat nothing. I'm in my bed. My sister's come to stay with me, laying on my chair. Like, but I'm in my bedroom. So every time I need to go to the toilet, I'm rolling off my bed and I'm crawling to the toilet like this. Like, you get me? I'm sitting down. Oh, yeah, get back. Crawling to my bed. Three days. Uh, after the three days, it's the afternoon. And it's like, it's probably about two o'clock. I'm ringing the ambulance. Like, you know, my stomach's hurting me. This time, I don't know what's going on. Like, you need to come to my house. You need to get me. Two hours later, still not ambulance. My mum's come to my house. She's prayed for me. It's that Nikki, don't worry. Everything's going to be cool. This, that, rare, rare, rare. I said, look, I phoned the ambulance. They're not even here. They've ended up coming. Four o'clock, took me to Whips Cross Hospital. I'm outside. 
like sitting in one of the chairs, like from the ambulance. Like my stomach is paining me, stomach is paining me. I'm just not even in the cubicle yet. Six o'clock, they've put me in a cubicle. My stomach is ripping out. My dad's come there. I'm screaming, ah, ah. Like, I'm thinking, well, what's this? My dad's saying, hey, sharp, this, that, really. I said, no, I fucking got sharp, man. Like, what are you talking about? My stomach's hurting me. Then he's like, and then I'm still sitting there, and then they're saying to me, ah, oh, you know what? We're going to have to um, operate on you six o'clock in the morning, so we're going to put you into one of the places to get you ready for your operation. Your, your appendicitis is ruptured in your body. Yeah, so from then I was like to me, I said, "What are you talking about?" They, they said I had gastritis and food po- um, food poisoning. They didn't say that. So you had you had appendix. Uh, I had a, appendicitis, I had a, appendicitis and it blew but, up. Yeah, but it blew up. And you could die from it, that. As well, I, yeah, man. I could have died. So it ruptured in me, poison all around in my body. This that, and then this week we're talking about not giving up, innit? So I woke um, the next day, whatever. I woke up. Some Scottish woman speaking. Somehow I've just woke up and I've seen myself. I've lost bare weight. Like, I was 12 stone before. I, I went to 9 stone. I had staples on my stomach. Like, I had a bag. That had the thing up my nose. You had a bag? Yeah. Like, Damn, I, I, I walked, that's the damage of the bloody appendicitis. Yeah, yeah. I, I couldn't go to toilet. I was nil by mouth for 10 days. I couldn't go to toilet for 10 days. Yeah? And it, it was horrible. Like, my cousin Cruz Leon, like, diverse, Chi, all them man will come to the hospital. My uncle Carton and that, they would just come there making sure that I'm all right. Like, I'm buzzing off the morphine, talking to them about dreams and different things. I'm always squeezing the morphine. Yeah, I had that one. Yeah, but it was, it was a painful experience. I've never felt so much pain in my life. So then one time the doctor couldn't get the cannula in my hand and I switched at her, switched. Yeah, she walked out. She never came back for six hours. I'm there telling my manager at the time or my friend Skits, I was like, but you lot are sitting here and you are just watching me and I'm shaking the bed. Like, you get me? Like, I don't know where I got this strength from. I said, go and find a woman. No one could come and put the candle in my hand. My mum's come from nowhere, praying. Yeah, this way. Yeah, I've gone calm. Straight, yeah, and the do- doctors come after that, put the candle in my hand. Yeah, press the morphine thing. I've passed out. You get me? So what I'm saying is that I've gone through the most traumatic experience at the at the height of my career. You know what I'm trying to say? They said, oh yeah, your your stomach's gonna get better. It's gonna be cool. How long did you have the bag on for? I had the bag on for 10 days. Yeah, I had the bag on for 10 days. I was in the hospital for like two weeks. How did that make you feel, walking about with that bag? Ah, uh, but for 10 days, I couldn't even walk anyway. So after that, like the, on the 11th day, I, I could start the, you know, walking with the thing. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. and walking to the edge of the, like, to the, to, to the ward, and then coming back, and then, that was it, and then I could start going to the toilet a little right, bit. So even you're going through all of that stuff. Yeah, yeah. Did you actually think when this is over, mm. I'm gonna get back on this and I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna do that, or did you actually think, you know what, this is it, I'm out of here, I'm mm-hmm. not gonna be bothered. No, I knew that in myself that you know I'm I'm gonna get back. Everyone that chasing state is coming, see oh, look, temps don't worry, we're gonna get you back to where you're supposed to be, this, that. But check this. So I've come out, um I've come out the hospital after 15 days. I've walked to the bank the day after and paid my rent. What am I doing walking? They've unclipped staples from the bottom of my stomach and said, we need to make sure the infection oozes out of your stomach because otherwise he's going to reinfect you. And so we don't did, I, did it leave the wound open? They, they, um, they, I've had a two-inch hole in my stomach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah? I had a two-inch hole in my stomach from the clips. So they said, come back in November and then we're going to be able to see what we can do with you. Went back in November. They said, oh, look, don't worry, you're going to be all right. So the, now the two-inch hole is kind of like scabbing over. You get a nurse coming to your house every day to come and clean it and do whatever innit yeah. so I, 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 I've had I, I was on William Morris then like you get me an agency and I, in October I had like 15 shows like, I was £1,500 at the time me and Skip Speaks went to every show and clinked it I just we used to put on large t-shirts and whatever so then was that, your, was that even with your injury yeah that was with my injury oh, when I come to the hospital and then and Chasing Status had a tour at the end of the year and then they had one another one um, between March I think it was, yeah, but yeah, March. We had a two week tour um, in March. But then I started that, my bowel kept on getting caught in the hole in my, in my, in, in my, in my stomach. And at times I'll be at my house and I'll be like, whoa, whoa, like nearly vomiting, getting a black bag, this, and I'll be by myself. So I'm phoning Wits Cross. I'm like, look, you know what? Yeah, the, my stomach's still not better. Like, you, the, the, I've, I'm, I, I'm like a pregnant man. Like, you get me? You know, no one's there. Like, my six pack is gone like this, and my bowel's protruding like that. 
And that brother, this is mad. Like, what's going on? I said, you need to operate on me now. They're telling me it's not an emergency operation. I'm like, brother, what's this? All in the time when I'm just supposed to be getting in and doing music. No one doesn't even know what's going on with my mental. But like, cool, I'm staying calm. Tutus, at the time, where, where, um, John Wolf was assigned to be my manager. Wiley's manager. That he was getting rid of and getting back, getting rid of, getting... He took me to Harley Street. Went to Harley Street. Oh, yeah, you know what? You're going to need a mesh in your stomach. What? You know what? We can get you a pig mesh or we can get you um, um, a biological mesh. The pig mesh costs six grand. I said, I'm not fucking pork in my stomach. And then, oh, yeah. Or you, do you get the biological mesh and it's eight grand. So ah, cool. I've saved my money. I've got racks in my account. No one don't know I saved my money from £1,500, going paying the cab £200, £300, like coming from homelessness. You understand? You get me? That. And I was like to myself, nah, man, you know what? These are trying to rape me for my money. This, this doesn't make sense. Before you knew it, the operation went from eight grand, the mesh went from eight grand to 10 grand to 12 grand to 15 to 20 grand to 25 grand. Right? You get me? And then I was sitting in Princess Grace one day, and then they said, Oh, you know what? We can't continue unless you go to the bank and you transfer the money. So at the time that I had, like, you get me, I had quite a bit of money in my account. So they said, transfer 12 and a half. So I transferred the 12 and a half. And then I told Sue at the time to transfer the tour money that I didn't take, which was 2,700. So I ended up probably paying like just under 15 grand at the time. And then Sue was like, oh, no, man, you know what? Fuck this, man. John Wolf, he fucked you up this, that way. You're not supposed to be paying this much money. We're going to make him pay the 10 grand. You understand? You get me? So obviously he said, oh, he's, he made the, John Wolf paid the 10 grand, but John Wolf ain't giving the money. So he's paid it. So I'm thinking, there's a Ginos. Already, <laughs> but at the time, I'm not even preying it. You know, them ones there, you get me? So then, yeah, the operation was 25 grand. They're telling me, ah, oh, you're lucky it's not 50 grand. This is what they're saying at the hospital. Sat there for a week, they've done whatever they've done. I've had a plastic surgeon to get rid of my hole. You can even see my, like, my belly button is slightly to the right. Like, you know, there's a scar on my stomach still. This, that, I've got through the operation. And then on the, on the last day, I've looked at my iPhone. And then I said to the nurse, I said, oh, do you know what? One special woman come to talk to me. And I was like, am I, am I, like, this is me when I was in Ibiza. Am I going to get my six pack back like that? She goes, oh, no, I'm sorry. Your stomach, you, you're going to be forever deformed. And then I'll never get my, 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 my abdomen, my six pack back to the way it was. And I was like, how I felt was, I felt shattered. Because I was like, what? You, you can go to these places and... Whips Cross didn't want to um, do an emergency operation on me. So if I didn't have this money, like, You'd be yeah, I would be effed up. So I'd be like, all right, cool. So I, I just listened to her. I said, why are you joking? I'm not going to be able to look like that again. She goes, oh, no, I'm sorry. At that point, what did you think? I, I just thought, you know what? This, I just said, you know, I, I don't believe what she's saying. Yeah, you get so that's what they said when they said to me, I'm never going to walk again. I was like, fuck off. Never in a million years. I'm gonna be walking, bro. Watch. Yeah. Watch. Yeah. So then I got out of the place, and then you did. Like Princess Grace has got a receptions on each floor. One of the women said to me, "Come back when you won the lottery." <laughs> I was like, "Huh? <laughs> Come back when you won the lottery, bro? That's fucking feisty. You get me, Big Princess Grace. You get me." And it's like, like we're talking on a, a notion of not giving up, and I'm just like, but I I didn't want to give up. Two months after that, my mum's come to me. Um, with a revelation about the name um, um, or, or the term hallelujah, praise Yah, and in the hospitals, the uh, Whips Cross and then um, um, Princess Grace, I was reading the New Testament because my mum always told me to read it with that like, the red writing in Matthew and what Yahushua was saying at the time. I knew him as J S U S, but we know the letter J is less than five hundred years old, and the Messiah wasn't known by that name then. So she's so saying hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Who means that. Yeah, praise Yahuwah. So every time they're saying that the letter J is silent, it's not silent. So when we've been going to church, they've been lying about the Most High's name. So I said, well, so I said, so wait. So the Most High has took me through this operation here, taking me through this one, but your stomach, well, it's your second gut. That is, when your second gut gets tampered with, well, that is it. So I said to myself, no, 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 no. This ain't coming from nowhere. I was always going to church, going to different classes in the week and whatever. So I, I knew to myself that, yeah, the most I was watching over my life, you know? Like, g getting back into the music, trying to get back into... So, so uh, 
after the yeah. stomach. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm just trying to put the. No, no, it's fine. Yeah, go the, on. I'm trying to associate because it wasn't until after I got shot five times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I realised there's something powerful out here. Yeah, yeah, also, yeah. You know how spiritual yeah, we are. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't. Where it come from was, I didn't realise. Right? I didn't realise. I didn't realise until after I got shot. Right. And after I got shot, they said to me, um, basically, what happened? They, they wanted that was it. For the geezer that got the geezer that shot me, they wanted the X-rays um, for his case. Do you know what I'm saying, or something like that. And I said, oh, I can't get him. I can't get him. I don't know how to get him. I don't know how to get him. And then basically, what they done? I think they went into the hospital to the hysteria and got it from the hysteria, and then they brought him to me. Yeah, to confirm or to give him the authorization to take him, right? I mean, they give them to me, right? And I've gone through them. I realised at that point, that yeah. that point right there, I, thought, I see the X-ray. I was like, "What the fuck?" I've looked at the bullet flat in my eye. I thought, "Wow, we got put together, right, to create conflict." Someone put us in the same room, so we had it with each other. So we murdered each other. So something bad happened to either one of us, right? But look, the Most High has put us in the place at the right time, at the right, at the right time for my life and his life. Do you understand? Yahuwah! <laughs> <laughs> Without that, yeah, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't have gone up to the next level of training. Yeah. Do you know I mean, I trained hard. I trained hard prior to meeting Temps, right? But after meeting Temps, now I've got to up my game because there's someone out there that can outdo me, yeah? And when I see him go away doing these 10, 10, 10, I was like, no, no, no. Man's pressing 100 kilo. I've got to do that now. So I had to get myself up to a 100 kilo benchmark for every exercise I can do. And that's because of Tim. So that's the most high, the powerful universe that puts people together. Yeah. So the real message in all of this, yeah, is never giving up. Yeah. Right? Never giving up. Yep. Stay focused. And just, just just, just to add quickly, it's just, yeah, after all that, you know, I was out for like two and a half years, still doing shows here and there, arena tours with Chasing Status, whatever. But then in 2014, um, Big Up Rage, Rage MC, Chasing Status, Pat, yeah? He was like to me, ah, oh, the year before 2013, I went to Thailand. And he knew I was into doing like martial arts and things like that. So he goes, if you want to come with me, come. And I said, like, you know what? This is my best chance to Boy, go. Sorry. Yeah. So yeah, it was what? 2014. It was like the 7th of January. Yeah. And I must have booked my flight. I said, nah, man, I'm going. And it was for the 8th. You know them Wednesday, like you get me. And it, he did, he wasn't forcing me to do it. He told me about it. I said, bro, this guy's a general. I'm going to book my flight. Yeah, come to... um." Um, Phuket, Ruai, whatever. I said, like, all right, cool. So I've gone, this, that, gone to, um, um, where did, what airways did I go on? I ended up going to um, Dubai first, and then from Dubai went to Bangkok, yeah? And then from Bangkok, it was an hour, Phuket. And then I phoned it, I said, like, bruv, you know, like, I'm here, I see you at the airport, this, that, whatever. We got in a cab, drove straight to where we were staying, whatever, and then I was there for seven weeks, training. I ran every single day, Monday to Friday. Saturday, I just, you get me, I, I wouldn't do nothing. For me, then it was Sabbath, innit? So then Sunday, the gyms were, we weren't closed, but you could just go in and train by yourself. And I would just be doing so much kicks, knees, elbows, doing it, doing my sit-ups. But I train it. We, we would run um, three to five K in the morning and then eight K in the afternoon. Bruv, man was killing in it. We done hundreds of thousands of miles. We train twice a day. He would Pat would take me to the fish market. We were going eating fish. Them times I was eating shrimps, but obviously I don't eat shrimps now. With big fish, big fuck off fishes, fruits, fresh everything, sun, vitamin D, like, and that was it for me. I said, yeah, praise the most high you are. Every time I used to go out, I used to read my Psalms. I'll read my Psalms. When I never read my Psalms, the dogs would chase me. <laughs> That's, that's what I leave. I said to myself, like, yeah, you, you know, there's something out here. Isn't it? You, you, you're not just out here. You, what are you doing? You're not. Yeah, so I make sure I read Psalms 91, Psalms 51. Yeah, this one, Psalms 27, and I'll go for my run. You get me? No dogs is barking. They all sleeping. When I just miss the day, yeah, 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 guys, yeah, yeah, man. For anyone who hasn't been to Thailand, like, they're like, not normal pet dogs. These are packs of like. Yeah. They will chase the you street, around, yeah. do everything to you, innit? So I'll just like. When we're talking about not giving up, I never saw this day, innit? I never saw this day in 2010 when I felt that thing in my stomach when I was in Napa. I never I never saw this when I was in the hospital bed at the Princess Grace. There were so many years where I just wanted to just 
I was like, what the fuck am I doing? Like, you get me? You go to small Muay Thai clubs. I'm going to a Muay Thai club with my cousin. I'm, I'm there. The trainer, Daniel Sam, is like, he's doing bare things. Like, I'm 100% fit. I'm like, bro, like, I'm not even 100%. I was pissed because 2010, just before the, um, the carnival, I met up with one guy called Vaz. And, and my barber's cousin, um, my barber's um, cousin, my barber was too fast at the time. And I said, I'm going to get into Taekwondo or Muay Thai. He goes, no, my cousin just trains down the road in, in Maryland. It's that, whatever. So I started training with him for two weeks. He said, yeah, I'm, I want to get you into Interclub. I want to get you your first fight. Yeah, before you knew it, that's where my first operation happened. So then I, I've always wanted to fight. I've always wanted to do Muay Thai, this, that. So it just took me to a point and a position in my life that I said, you know what? Like, I, I've always had this in me where I've not wanted to give up. Fighting with your friends when you're younger, kicking the ball over on purpose to get rushed, and you don't care about how many kicks you're getting or punching. But I, I will never give up. This because of the most high, Yahuwah, and how he's been in my life. I would, it says in the word, I will praise you, I will, I will, I will spread you, I will exalt your name to the, all the nations. People are watching this, 100,000 people watching this. Yahuwah is my refuge. I take refuge in the most high Yahuwah and there's no one that can take that away from me. You get put into your life and death situations. Yeah, I'm not perfect. I sin like everyone else, but I confess, I repent on my sins and try to go down the right path. You know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, you got to try and be the better version of yourself. Look at what we're in today. You're telling me you can't have no most high in your life governing you. Well, who are you? What, do you think you're going to get past all these viruses and all these diseases? What do you think this is what's going on? Do you think that these people are doing this by themselves? Or do you think the most high is in charge of everything that's going on? Where's your heart going? What path are you going down? You understand? And to me, that's what I tell myself. I can't go a minute in the day where the most high you who are eight on my head, in my mind, or when I look at Marv, I'm here talking to you, I look at you, it's just there. And I'm just, it's, other people might feel like that in, in whatever they believe in, innit? You know what I mean? But just know, whatever I am, whatever you see, training, forget the flesh. It's nothing to do with me. I'm a soul, I'm a spirit. The trying me is me. Not the weights, not the 10 times 10, not the 50, 40, 30, not the 500 burpees. The person, the spirit that tries to do that. I'm that. I'm infinity. Right. What, 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 what. Just on that point, right? How many exercises did you do for our drive down to pick you up this morning? I done 275 burpees and I done 750 push ups and I done the six kilometer run before I done the burpees. And that's within an hour, an hour drive. An hour's drive, right? I says, no, you do what you do. He said, I'm I ain't trained yet. I said, well, you can do what you're doing. By the time I get here, you'll be done, right? Within an hour, it took an hour and 12 minutes. So we done all of that. So try to do 100 burpees. Try to try to do 100 burpees. Or try to do 50 burpees and 50 press-ups after a, a five-mile run. Just try to do that. And you'll see what yeah. he done before he come here today. And I can guarantee you, if he could get in the ring now, if have 10 mans in the ring, he'll get in the ring and do 10 mans. And this is the beautiful thing about people like us, right? It's that never giving out mindset. Yeah. It's never that, that not facing adversity with both arms, both legs and a strong head, right? Yeah. So it's like from five, six, seven, eight years of age. You can remember being five years of age, right? Yeah. Right. So you remember your mindset back then? Yeah, yeah, what yeah. What kind of a mindset did you have when you was five years of age? When you're five, you're just, you're just free, innit? Like, you're just... You're free, you just want to play, you just, everything just seems like it's forever, you know? That's how my mindset was, but you always couldn't wait to grow into the person that you needed to be. For did, your you, did you did you see yourself being this person when you was five years of age? But what, I, did, what, did, what did you, because I'm being honest, right? I wanted to be a policeman. Bro, <laughs> <laughs> revelation. <laughs> <laughs> before the armed robbery desires, it's yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. before, before the age of eight. What went wrong? No, no, it was time. When I was in Liverpool, um, when I was a baby, I remember I wanted to be a policeman or a fireman. When I, because I was in Liverpool, I used to go to the church and all that, yeah? So to me, I wanted to be a police. I wanted to be that guy. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I suppose it was the trauma that I went through in life with my dad and my family. I built up a resentment, a hatred, and then a sort of uh, deluded passion to do something else, right? But initially, I wanted to be a policeman or a fireman, I remember that. So your first memories of what you wanted to become when you was older as a kid, what was that person? Like, what was that? What person? I wanted to be, there was a couple of things that I can say definitely what I wanted to be. 
I used to like Michael Jordan, so I wanted to do basketball, but I never grew in like, it. <laughs> you know, like, do all the skills and slam dunk, boy. I'm never gonna get to six foot, whatever. So that's cool. But I liked a lot of entertainment. I loved the Jackson Five, Michael Jackson, and I wanted to actually be a singer. So when like, so I, the, what, the point is, you wanted to be a singer. So, yeah, but, right, right. so yeah. what I'm saying mm, is this, mm, right? Mm, From uh, right, mm, right. Up to five years of age, mm. up to eight years of age, I wanted yeah. to be a policeman or a fireman. Yeah, yeah. Right, see, when I turned eight, mm. I wanted to be an armed robber. And I wanted to go to prison. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be a cat eight. Mm. I wanted to get that scar down my face. Because mm -hmm. yeah, I wanted, remember, um, Enter the Dragon? Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. I wanted that scar down my face. I wanted to get shot. Because mm -hmm. I see people get shot. I said, mm. I wouldn't scream like that. I wouldn't cry like mm -hmm. that. So I always wanted that stuff. So why I asked you that question mm -hmm. was because of them early age, mm -hmm. yeah, you actually had a... A, a, a thought in your head because mm. what I tell the kids now is see it, believe it, achieve it. I wanted to be everything I've become, so be careful what you wish for, right? Now, Temper T, yes, wanted to be an artist, yeah, when he was five years of age, right? What have you become? In five years of age, I'm gonna be exact with you, exact, exact. My Go dad, on. my dad had uh, Mike Tyson's greatest hits, and I wanted to be a boxer, okay. but then he never took me boxing. You know what I mean? I just me my energy and how people know I'm a performer. I'm I'm everything. I can. I, I've got so much talents. That's what I, I wanted to be. Mike Tyson smacking people up in every knockout. That you get me. But I, that's I, why I, I got the be passion. I wanted to be Marvin. That's why I got the passion from looking at Michael Jackson's mm. dancing and singing. And that's why if you no know, people look at me on a mic, I MC the way I do because that's my passion. Mike Tyson punch. That's my aggression. You know, I'm, I just took it and I said, ah. Right, so mm. you wanted to be Mike Tyson, you wanted to be a boxer, you wanted to be an artist. <laughs> artist right? yeah, so yeah. what's he become? An artist, artist. and a Muay Thai fighter. Like so what I'm saying is, see it, believe it, achieve Cheap it, because everything yeah. is possible. Cool, yeah. Just stay focused yeah. and don't worry about what people think when they say, oh, you're an idiot going to work. Is he an idiot? No, he's like a 10 ton wrecking ball in the gym. That doesn't make you an idiot. No. Do 200 burpees, mate, and see if he's an idiot. Yeah, is that your work ethic makes you the man you are? Right, the effort you put in and what you choose to do determines how you're going to develop. Right now, he applies himself one hundred percent to anything he does, and that's why he went through all the adversity. He had a job, he got homeless, he got nearly died on the brink of death. On the brink of death, he got better. He got told he'd never have a six pack again. He got a six pack again. Yeah, and then he started training. Then he became a, a muay thai, and then he blew up. Like. Or then he blew up and then became more tired. Like, evil either. Mm. Everything he dreamed about, everything he thought about as a young man yeah. growing up, he achieved that, right? Now, you might not have achieved it in the way that you believed you, you wanted it, it. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. you fucking achieved it. It's gone back and you can look back and you can see it, right? Did he did he end up making the mistakes that I made and go to prison? No. Why? Because when he got put in that position, he thought, you know what? I'm not doing that again because if that happens again, I'm going to prison. So, you know what? I'm going to keep it moving. I'm going to go this way and that way. Where well, I just went head in, right? So it's all about your choices. So we can't blame other people for when we end up in prison. We can't blame other people when we end up on drugs. We can't blame people, other people when shit happens in our life that we don't like. It's all your behaviour and your conduct. So your behaviour and your conduct, as long as it's correct and aimed in the right direction with the right purpose, the right commitment, you'll achieve your goal. So never, never give up. Never give up. Yeah. Do you know what I'm the, saying? The thing that I think behind the determination that you guys have got, like you say, it's the spirit and it's the faith. Because mm -hmm. if you've got the spirit and the faith, like what you had in your darkest times, that's what gives you, I think, the determination. No, I never had it in my darkest times, yeah? Mm. What I had in my darkest You just didn't know you had it. No, I didn't know I had it. I, I had an inkling, and that, for argument's sake, I'll give you the darkest point of my life, right? The darkest point of my life, right? I'm in hospital, I've been shot. Now, I've got an estranged partner and I've got a new partner. Now, my estranged partner, um, come to the hospital to see me, right? And I really didn't want her in the hospital room because of just complications we've had in our life throughout our journey, right? So I just said, I'd rather you not come up. Can you just send the kids up? So when the kids come up into the room, my new partner and my kids stood on two separate sides of the room. And you know, like, it broke my heart. So I just sort of set, I've closed my eyes. I said, you know what? All of you, get out of my room. Get out of my room. Get out of my room. I don't want you in my room. I said, I said do me a favour. Just take me away from these people. Just take me away from everybody. Fuck them, I don't care. Man, I don't know what happened yet. I was like convulsing, like, I was like, I didn't mean it, I didn't mean it, I didn't mean it. I couldn't do nothing, I couldn't breathe, I couldn't scream, I couldn't shout, and I felt something going on. 
a nurse walked past and then pressed the panic button and they've all come in just all I, I don't know what was happening because I can't remember what was happening but I remember I remember I couldn't breathe I remember I was convulsing I remember I was thinking shit 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 I didn't mean it I didn't mean it and then they've all put all the things over my face and I've come back and I was like <sighs> and I thought Do you know what there's something up there there's something up there because I really asked to go then and it felt like I was going and then the x-rays come after that and then I started thinking wow do you know what he spoke to me because then when he was telling me I'm never going to walk I remember the voice in my ear saying don't worry about that Marv you'll be alright now two and a half years you're going to be walking mm. but you've got to stop taking morphine so then I listened to the voice and then I stopped taking morphine I stopped doing what I was doing two and a half years later I had a professional boxing fight on the telly on an undercard of two world title fights do you understand so everything we go through I believe is just to prepare us for the next stage of our journey yes so we can never give up because what's coming is better than what you've had yeah what's coming is better than what you had and what's coming is better than what you had so stay focused man and it's like who you meet as well it's like you meet people along the way and they been through what you've been through and you might have not been through what they've been through yeah but it's similar though, it, it is. I've been through what you've been through. You've been through what I've been through. I'm not saying that. All, I'm, I, I'm just, what I'm saying is, from, 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 our, from our section here, yeah, there's people that ain't been through what we've been through. No, no, but yeah. I ain't been through what you've been through. Yeah. But when you're talking, yeah, yeah. I'm ticking boxes and bruh, that's something similar happened to me. Yeah. Isn't that? Wow. But I, what, what, I, what, I'm, what I was meant to say is this is like, um, there's people you're meant to talk to, advise, guide, navigate. By just what you're saying, you don't. But the most high, you who will put you in certain places in certain rooms. You open your mouth. Is it even your own words? A man's steps are ordered by you who. What does a man know about his own way? You understand. So we're not put in this life just for ourselves. Just like I talk about, we're speaking about the motivation and why I do certain things and things like that. We're all interlinked with each other. We're all meant to learn something from each other. This is why we go through the experiences we go through. Innit? You might be thinking to yourself. I know you've done it, I've done it, you've done it. You're by yourself. And if, why is that one happening to me? I've gone through this one. I, then you wake up and you say to yourself, well, you know what, Like it, it has to happen though, isn't it? You get it and, and like, when you've been through it, you think, well, I don't know what, I know why I had to do that then. Yeah. So was there, was, there a, was there a figure in your life outside your parents, yeah, that actually kept you on the straight and narrow? And the reason why I ask, because we're just talking, I don't know why Eddie Topping has just come into my head, but... Eddie Topping was a guy there, I used to hate him, right? I really used to hate him because he used to beat me up. But anytime I was bunking off school or smoking weed or doing naughty things, and he was a black kid from my area, right? And like, he was the older, a couple of, couple of generations older than me. Every time he used to see me doing bad, he used to chase me and beat me up, telling me, what are you doing? What are you doing? He beat me up. I, I never, never, never could understand why, right? Until the day he died. Do you know what I mean? And the day he died, I couldn't say thank you because I'd had kids by then. Do you know, like when you've, got, when you've had kids, yeah? And I realised why you done what you done for me. But did you have anyone in your life like that? You know what? Or was it just your parents? No, because what I'm saying what, what, I never had the parental support what, what, that you had. Yeah, yeah. So was what, it your what, parents what, or was what, it what someone it was, else? That, 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 um, those words that I wrote here was always from my mum. And my dad would always tell me, stop hanging around these friends. They're not your friends. Like, but he was right though, right? My, my dad was right. I was speaking to him the other day and we was both laughing about it. I said, look, see, I don't even want friends now. Yeah. People that are in my life, they're connected to me They're your benefits. Yeah. Or everyone else prior to that, yeah. and, and you were their benefit. Yeah, but especially when you wear your heart on your sleeve. You same understand? Me, you get yeah. me? It's the tick boxing. It's the same. I give my heart to everybody and got nothing back Yeah, they don't give it back to you. And then you get mad. You think just about, I wouldn't have done that to you. Exactly. But you've done it to... But everyone, oh, no, don't worry, that's life, you know. You get... Where you can't... You're saying that's life. You, you don't do what I'm doing. You don't, you're never going to feel how I feel. But there's thousands of others that will listen to this and resonate and be like, you know what? Damn, they're, do you know what I'm thinking the truth. I wish I could have been him. Because if I'd have done what he done rather than retaliate and inflict pain and damage on people for letting me down, I would have become the man that I know I would have become now. Much sooner, that, yeah. Yeah, a lot sooner. But this is where it builds up. Because now, meeting people like him and having him speak to me, in your brain, it, I, I, I'll just say spiritually, it's not, it's not even just you, yourself. The, the spirit, that the, the, the rock that the Most High gives you, when you meet people like him, you just have to say to yourself, I'm not going to boil up. I'm not gonna, but one day, I'm going to go. <laughs> one day, I'm going to... No, I can say it to him. He'll sit there in the car, he'll, like, he'll laugh, he'll snigger, he'll be like, you get me, whatever. But I know he understands because he's done it already. Mm. But in my head, 
I, 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 I say to myself, I've made certain decisions in my life. I've wanted to go down this path, but you lot don't know when I'm gonna go left. Because the way you just let it out, let it out, let it out. I'm in the gym, my mum tells me, oh, if you didn't have the gym, if you didn't have your running, if you didn't have your music and this, that, you, that I don't know where you would have been. You understand? And I say to myself, but I haven't really snapped. And then I told myself, you know what? You heard the most I've got you. You're gonna snap for what you need to snap for with all the- Hopefully you never have to snap. No, no, mm. but with all the bullshit that's going on in the world, and it's not mean snap as in mean like a mental snap, but you're not gonna control yourself. Like, or you're, you're in, you, 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 there's no self-control. The snap of your purpose, when you really awake, and Don't you see that in you, though? No, I see it, oh. but there's something else I always see. And that's one thing that, you know, when you... There's other people out there that are going to feel what I'm saying. And there's a, a a purpose for why I'm saying it today. I didn't know I was going to come on, on air today and say this. You get me? But whatever you think you are, there's something else. So don't give up on yourself. Trust. Don't think that because you're who you are today and you let this one slide and you let that slide and then you're thinking one day you might just go and do this one. Bruv, save it all in, save it. And because that person that you're gonna be tomorrow, the most High has already ordained it for you. And I'm the prime example, when you think about it, yeah? I was the biggest, baddest villain in my environment. And I never ever believed that I would be legitimately straight and work mm. for a living. And look at today, I got to Danny Street heading towards Buckingham Palace to get knighted, OBE the knighted, imagine that. Mm-hmm. And I never believed it, and I got personally invited to Downing Street. So, the person that you are today, just know that something great is coming as long as you stay focused, Focus. stay positive, and stay real, you know? And don't pretend, don't fall into other people's wants and needs. Don't become a benefit to other people. Yeah. Be who you are. I was everybody's benefit. I've done what I've done to keep everybody happy. else happy. Yeah. And I made myself miserably sort of, I, 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 I weren't miserable doing what I was doing, but the outcomes, I made my children miserable. I made my family miserable. You know, the people around me that truly love me, I made them miserable. And that's something that you can never put back. I can't put back them times for my kids. I can't put back them hours. I can't put back them days. I can't put back them things when I was neglected them. Do you understand? So believe that, stay focused, stay positive, and just stay real, man. And just head towards your goal. Don't fall into the violence. Don't fall into the drink. Don't fall into the drugs because there's something special for every single one of you out there. And we're living proof. We're living proof. Yeah, we've been, like, I've been abandoned. He hasn't been abandoned, but he's been traumatized, yeah, through work, homelessness. I've been kicked out from mums and dads, so I, to me, I take that, that as being abandoned. Yeah, so you've had yeah, abandonment, yeah? yeah, yeah, yeah? yeah, yeah so yeah. mums and dads, right, so you've been abandoned, right? Mm. So obviously, we ain't delved into the negative of yeah, your of family. Of why it happened and this, that, yeah. but I'm but not yeah, perfect. So he's been, been abandoned, happens, so yeah. he's been abandoned, right? He's been homeless, yeah? He's been to, on the brink of death, and he's bounced back to become 10 for tea, yeah? So, is there any, well, there ain't no other messages you can give. We'll give all the messages out there, yeah, right? Because, yeah, yeah, yeah. the, uh, and Joe, it's just a pleasure now. And yeah, it's a pleasure growing with you. It's a pleasure being in your world, being in your life, and being part of your journey. Where we're from, we're just from there. So, one day you're going to have to defend yourself. One day you're going to have to look after your family. One day you're going to have to protect your kids. One day you're going to have to just defend yourself, defend your dad, your mum, your friends. Don't be an idiot. You understand? Train. Be per- persevere, have resilience. Don't see it as are you. It's a street thing. Or so in life, do you, back in the day, we would have to go hunting. We would have to be on the field. We would have to war and leave the kids and the women back in the village and protect the space. And if that's you, you continue on your path. Don't say ours. Oh, it's because of this, or you've got a high energy and 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 someone's trying to squash you down to make you feel like your vibration is. That's because their energy is low and they're not on the same frequency as you. Be who you need to be for your family. Be who you need to be for yourself. Don't be afraid to tell people no, you know? And, and most of all, seek the most high. Do it however you want to do it. He's going to meet everyone anyway. So don't worry about, oh, yeah, is this the right way I'm doing it? Or yeah, I'm not perfect, yeah? He's going to meet everyone individually. You understand? You get me? Just be strong. And that's the message that I put out there. That's the message Marv puts out there. Be strong. Continue every day, don't give up, and never give up. 
Temper underscore T Instagram. I've come off Twitter. Um, Part TV Worldwide on YouTube. Yeah, man. I'm and what just... I want to say is, don't be embarrassed to work. Don't yeah. be embarrassed to get a job. Mm -hmm. Don't be embarrassed to work. Don't be embarrassed to get a job because I'll tell you something now. Yeah, Every person that I know that has worked from school or opened their companies from school live in lovely houses. They have a lovely life. They travel three times a year. They've got lovely kids. Their kids are in a nice place. They go to nice places. All the people that I know from the road have ended up dead in prison mm -hmm. or on drugs. Facts. 2% or maybe 1% of them have lived a decent life. I was the 1% that made it, lived a, a decent life. I was the 1% that lived a decent life and it was fucking miserable, right? It was high times, but the lowest. High times and then the lowest. There's no in between. There's no in between, yeah? Drug filled, ego filled, anger filled and violence filled lifestyles are no value. So get a job, be peaceful, look in the mirror and be happy. That's the only message I've got for everybody out there that's on the road or thinking or considering about entering onto the road because it ain't worth it. For what? For, for what? what? For what? <laughs> for what? You know, that's my new slogan now, yeah? For hey, what? Hey, that's that's for what? what? Yes, man. Um, Is there anything Yeah, this has been a different one to what I thought. Like your mindset, your faith, your spirit spirituality, your determination is inspiring and it's... Uh, a lot different to what I thought it was going to be, and maybe you've got a different calling in life. Just being a musician, you need maybe you're there to inspire people and guide people. Be a it does, does sound like a spirit guide. Yeah, he does proper spirit guide, bro. Life coaching. Talks, yeah, no, this minister. Saying, this is what yeah. I'm saying. So I see things in him. Yeah. Right. So he's talking to me now, but my, but my, but I said no, no. That's why I've got the platform, and I've got the network to give him what he needs. This is something you're gonna know that we're all gonna resonate with. It's right perfect. Now. Could show the audience some of your music, and it's a good message. In this yeah, world. this is a very good message. It's called "Don't Want." Um, all right. Sneak bring it was to come. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Just, you get me? Just when, quick, quick, quick. Uh, when can people enjoy that video? Um, um, I'm, I'm, I'm in a I'm process of I'm getting it shot now. Just getting the treatment done and and what next? You know, so yeah. It's awesome. That's gonna resonate with everyone. And uh, so guys, reach out, support this inspirational, positive guy. And if you can get into one of his platforms, Temper T, Temper T, Spotify, Temper T, Instagram, Temper underscore T. YouTube, um, Part TV Worldwide. And yeah, that's where you can get, get to me at the, at the moment. And if you want to watch him, subscribe, like, and comment on Marvin Herbert's YouTube page. Marvin Herbert's YouTube page. You get me? <laughs> Dunno the Dunno is live, yeah! man. You get me? Yes, yeah, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. Love, man. Yeah. So, guys, this being nothing but the truth with Temper T. Temper, thank you. Yeah, hey, come on, man. Love G, man. Nice you get me? Come on. Yeah, yeah. Nice yeah, yeah. one, man. Bless.